have a quorum and I'm going to call our meeting to order. If you will um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mute your microphone if you'd be so kind. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I do see that we have some folks in the council chambers. I identified Chad and I think Marty. Um, Chad, if you know everyone else who's in the chambers, could you just, and I think Terry is there, um, if you could just uh, indicate who's in the council chambers. Sure, so it's City Administrator Wolf, uh, Finance Director Helverson, uh, Human Resources Director Schneider, myself, Dulce Johnson from the, as a citizen rep, Carrie Ahrens from the administrator's office, and Scott Miloff. All right, very good. Thank you and welcome all. Um, moving on to the agenda, uh, could we have an, uh, a motion to approve the minutes of our September 14th meeting? Move to approve. And okay. is there a second? All right, I heard a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, motion passes. Let's move on to, um, actually if you all do not mind, I would like to take uh, item 3.7 first. Uh, Chad will be speaking to that. If there's no objection, we'll just make that change in the agenda. Hearing no objection, Chad. Thank you. So um, this is a document to enter into an agreement with MSA Professional uh, Services to do a comprehensive affordable housing study. So uh, we've done as partnership with the Economic Development Corporation in 2015, a market rate study to determine the amount of market rate apartment units that the community could support and then in 2018 we did a condominium market study and that's the reason for some of the recent developments on uh, condos around the city and now we're looking at using some community development block grant funds to do an affordable housing market study to look at the need for affordable housing in the community because in um, a lot of our comments in the community survey on an annual basis is we need more affordable housing units and we do have a project with the Badger State Lofts that's coming on board here in the next couple months of 118 units but we feel the need to study the market to see how many additional units this market can support. So we went out in an RFP in July. We had two out-of-state contractors and one in-state and we have a relationship with MSA because they help us with our neighborhood revitalization uh, activities and we felt that they have what it takes to do the study so we're recommending moving forward with them. All right, does anyone have questions for uh, Chad? Chad, I assume within the context of this study there'll be some uh, pertinent uh, definitions of uh, affordable housing? That is correct. In the RFP, we did not put in definition of it because it seems like it's a different definition in every community. So yes, we will work with them to determine what that definition is and fits for this community. And then I had just one more question. Um, there are a number of low-income housing projects and Section 8 um, voucher uh, housing in the, in the area, uh, which is affordable. Uh, will the nature of and extent of that kind of housing be studied? We'll work with the housing authority that administers um, them to get some of the baseline information and then use that as the calculation. So yes, it'll be part of it. All right, very good. Uh, does anyone else have questions for Chad? If not, what I'm looking for is a motion to recommend approval of the um, uh, resolution and in entering into a professional services agreement with MSA Professional Services. So moved. So moved. Second. Right. Carrie, I'm going to let you take your choice there as to 
So moved and seconded. Um, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, motion passes. Really glad we're doing this. All right, let's move on then to uh, back up on the agenda to 3.1, um, resolution 71-2021. So um, this is with respect to the settlement of a claim with the city of, uh, by the city of Sheboygan with B&T Sales and Service. Chuck, do you wanna take that? Sure, so this is a little bit different than the typical claims that we get. This was a claim that the city had, uh, but under the uh, ordinance that you folks passed uh, not too long ago, you've given authority to the administrator to settle many of those claims as well. And so this is just simply a report that uh, that uh, claim has been settled uh, in the amount of $2,000. We'll receive $2,000 for um, the damage that was done. All right, always nice to have the money flowing in a different direction. Um, so we need a motion to file, I assume. Sorry, I don't, I've got the wrong IFC up. That is correct. All right, do we have a motion to file? Move to file. Second. All right, moved by Marcus, second by Trey. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair both side, motion passes. All right, let's move on then to 3.2, uh, submitting a communication from Dulcie Johnson regarding the ambulance fund budget. Um, and Marty, do you want to, or I'm, I'm not sure who wishes to speak on this? Um, <laughs> Ms. Johnson has some concerns, and uh, is there a way that we can address those concerns or, or not? Um, I'm just reading through to make sure that we, uh, this isn't one that came, the communication did not come to me. Um, Dulcie actually is at the podium. Would you like to hear her comments? Yeah. Certainly. Go ahead, Dulcie. Yeah, the, the question I have is why, why doesn't the 280 fund reflect the actual cost of the service? Why do you just put four, the salaries and benefits of four people in there and not the 22 that are needed? And you know the uh, uh, company that did that study uh, two or three years ago now, one of their four recommendations was that the city should consider adjusting their financials to reflect the 18 FTEs adjusted to 75% as a more representative cost allocation for EMS staffing requirements. And I really don't understand why that hasn't happened and why you're reluctant to do that evidently. I don't think it's gonna change anything. Uh, can anyone make a response? Well. This is Finance <coughs> Director Helverson. At this point, the salaries and benefits for ambulance and, and firefighters, because all firefighters, to my knowledge, have now become certified other than our fire chief, <coughs> um, the calls that are, are, are made where the fire department responds and or paramedics respond, this would be how the fire chief has allocated the, the dollars based on the time spent related to fire calls versus ambulance calls. Um, if, if we put all these firefighters that are dual purpose just in the ambulance fund, we'd be understating our, our fire department and, and either or vice versa. So this was the allocation method that was used. Well, I, I think it's simpler than you're making it. Um, 22 people are required to run the ambulance service as, ex as it exists, but you only account for four of them. And I realize that 
The original agreement was that four, you had to hire four people, so four people would be um, added to the, the roles, and those were always the last four hires. However, before Nancy Buss retired, she told me that's no longer the case. I don't know how those four people are selected, but you're not going to get to the exact penny, you know, the exact dollar amount of this, but you're going to have a closer figure uh, to the um, cost of personnel than just figuring four. It just really skews the, uh, the whole issue, I think. So I don't know why it would be, why is it so difficult to do as I do? <clears throat> you take the uh, four, the salaries and benefits for the four and the 280 fund, and that gives you their base, which is approximately, I think, 108,000, an increase of 7,400 over last year anyway. And then you take that amount times the 18 uh, additional people and, and take three quarters of that. And, and you would get a reasonable figure for the salaries and benefits uh, of the personnel required to run the ambulance service. And I would suggest, as, as I understand it, um, and if someone can correct me, I, uh, that would be wonderful. Um, all firefighters are currently involved in ambulance services. Um, I expect the fire chief is not with us today. City Administrator Wolf, would you be able to shed some light on this? I'll I'll do my best. I'm not sure why this fund, you know, why Fund 280 was set up for four firefighters. I expect that is an historical designation, um, and that the 280 fund is included in the overall fire department fund. I, I, I would have to consult and see what's all in the 280 and get some history on this. My, my understanding is that basically it's balanced with the revenues coming in um, because we, we know that the fire department is, is a cost and the complexity of it is the fact that everybody uh, can and does uh, basically rotate into um, the ambulance service. So whether it's four people, eight people, 22 people, <laughs> We basically, everybody's rotating into that. So we can balance it and show everybody in the ambulance fund and, you know, less people in the uh, fire department. But if we're looking to, um, to balance it equally, it's, it's very difficult. So You're missing the point with all due respect. It takes 22 people, as I understand it, to run the ambulance service. And why can't you just assume that those extra 18 are receiving the same amount of pay as the four that are included in that budget and take it from there? I, I, I know that you're not going to be able to account for Joe Blow was on the ambulance for four hours this day and Sonny was on the ambulance for six hours the next day. You can't do that. That's impossible. I'm not asking that. I'm just asking for a more accurate accounting of the personnel service, personnel costs of running the ambulance service. And, and don't see what I would suggest to you, but we obviously need to get more information. Uh, we need to have, I'm sorry that Mr. Halverson did not get this uh, uh, communication in advance. Um, I expect that Fund 280 was set up by Nancy Buss, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes those fund reports are really not contiguous with the reality of how the fire department works. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, <clears throat> there are, we have, I believe, 73 firefighters, and they all, all mm -hmm. are certified to provide ambulance service. So I think we need to get more information. Um, I don't want you to think that we only have 22 firefighters who are providing ambulance services. And um, I suggest that uh, maybe we can hold this to the next finance meeting when we can get more information for you. I, I realize that, that the ambulance that uh, probably all of the firefighters do at some time serve on the ambulance, but you can still figure out the costs of the, of the 18 plus 4 
that are needed to require it to do that. The other question I have, which nobody has been able to answer for all these years, and um, the fire chief is not here today, is <clears throat> do minutes count? We always hear that. Well, we can't close that station because minutes count. But yet, the last time I checked, half of the firefighters live outside the city limits and require volunteers to take care of their lives, their families, and their property. And that seems really strange that we could not have such a system in the city of Sheboygan, if it's okay for them and their families and properties. That's all I have to say. And, and, it, and it is interesting, the, the, the prospect of changing <clears throat> the entire firefighting system to a volunteer fire department for the city of Sheboygan would be quite a challenge, I believe. <clears throat> um, and uh, so, uh, but again, um, if I could have a motion to hold uh, Ms. Uh, Johnson's inquiry till our next finance meeting with a request that both the fire chief and the finance director and the city administrator be present to provide some answers, um, that would, uh, I think, be our next step. Do I have such a motion? I would hold a second to that. All right. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair Bosai. Thank you, Dulcie. We really appreciate your um, keen interest in this, and hopefully we can come to the, get to the point, uh, get to the bottom of what's going on here. Thank you. All right, let's move on to 3.3 3 is a communication from Alder Bourne about bonding and insurance requirements for municipal officials. Um, Attached to it is a, an article from uh, uh, the Municipality Magazine. Uh, Chuck, do you have any comments for us on this? Uh, it is my understanding that we have such coverage in place, or maybe the city administrator? We, we have the coverage that's required by state law. That is correct. Chair, I, did, I actually did contact our insurance company, talked with them um, extensively. And we are covered um, all the way to, you know, Alders as an example. So we, there is no reason, and they don't recommend uh, bonding. They do have, I think, two, two municipalities that do bond above and beyond, but it's not, uh, it's not a needed expense. Right, so in other words, the insurance coverage is, is satisfactory? And, and yes, yes, it is. The, the statutes seem to require bonding. That is correct. We do not need to bond. Check it. Yeah, I'll correct that. We do bond several employees, and we do have the bonds for those who are required to be bonded. Um, the, what I think um, Mr. Wolf is referring to is in, in the course of the discussion with Alder Person Boren, there was discussion. I think he, his suggestion was maybe we ought to bond more people. Uh, and the answer to that is no. Uh, a, you know, we bond the people who are who are appropriate to be bonded. Uh, additionally, as you will note, uh, even from the uh, article, um, when the department head who is required to be bonded, so in, in this case the finance director, which was uh, the finance department was Alder Boren's primary concern, uh, when with, with Marty being bonded, that covers not just him personally, but it, it covers the people that he supervises. Uh, and then finally, the, the, while we do have the bond because it's required, the real protection here doesn't come from the bond. The real protection comes from our other coverage. Uh, and we do have that other coverage through CIVMIC. And, um, and, and, you know, it is, uh, it is sufficient and uh, our coverage, you know, matches what a city of our size should have. Um, the, finally, the, the final issue is one that, you know, receives ongoing review, uh, which is policies and, and having good policies uh, really is what truly protects uh, in these cases. A bond, you know, is like a little Band-Aid. Um, and even insurance policies, while they protect us, um, the, the, best, the best protection is at the start with, with good policies. And I know uh, that uh, Marty's been working on those things as well and continuing to follow up on making sure those policies are where they need to be. Bert? 
Go ahead. Um, I as so as an alder person and a member of the finance committee, am I understanding that the city insurance covers me and my decisions as part of the finance committee for the city of Sheboygan? You are covered, um, and you're covered in a couple of different ways. First of all, we would, you know, as an alder, you're not going to touch money. So those kinds of policies, you know, don't necessarily protect you, but you're not touching that money. You're also covered by uh, immunity. Uh, you know, when, when you make decisions, you're covered by legislative immunity. Uh, so you are protected. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I think uh, probably a motion to file would be in order. Move to file. Second. All right, very good. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.4 is a resolution authorizing a budget adjust adjustment, excuse me, and appropriation in the 2020 budget regarding the Optimist Park Playground. Who would like to take that? I can take that, Chair. Um, so without any uh, DPW staff here, this is just basically a uh, donation that has come in and what we are doing uh, for the most part is following through on our normal process where we can uh, do a resolution to be able to spend these dollars. These dollars that were donated um, are to be used for the Optimist Park Playground. All right. So do we have a motion then to accept um, the, to make the budget adjustment and appropriation for uh, within the, I'm sorry, the 2020 budget for the Optimist Park Playground. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. <coughs> and thank you to the Optimist Club, that is a substantial donation. All right, 3.5 is a res resolution <laughs> authorizing a budget adjustment and appropriation in the 2020 budget regarding tree stump grinding. Um, I note that Joe is not here. Does anyone have I'll, I'll take any that. comments or questions? I, I can take that chair again. This is something that uh, the ATC organization has allowed us to do our own stump grinding and therefore the grant funds that they receive, um, we just get a portion of that to be able to, to cover our costs for our own stump grinding. So ultimately it, it could have been done by them and then we wouldn't get it, but I, I believe it would have dragged out the process a little bit more from a DPW perspective of, of accomplishing this. So we do our own stump grinding and then we receive the, the funding that they received through grants. So our bid, the low bid for grinding stumps is 44,000 and of that 7,800 uh, will be received by ATC to offset the cost, is that correct? That's correct. Is there a reason they aren't paying for the whole thing? Uh, they do. It's it's more than stump grinding. We receive just the stump grinding portion. I guess I'm not sure the uh, what I we can do it for seventy eight hundred dollars and and do it. I, I'm not sure about the bid process as far as who was all involved in that piece. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions or uh, concerns? Hearing none, we need a motion to uh, recommend uh, uh, adoption of the resolution authorizing the adjustment and appropriation for tree stump grinding. So moved. Chair, I, I still have one question. Go ahead. Uh, just for clarity, um, the city is paying $44,000 for stump removal, and we are getting $7,800 from ATC as a uh, as a percentage of what they owe us? They receive grant funds for that, and then we're receiving that portion to stump 
to, to grind out those stumps. They're doing more than just the stump grinding on these trees. That's just the portion that we're doing. And they receive funds that we're now, in a sense, they're the pastor and then we receive it because we're doing the work. So we, I, I think what we're trying to get at is who's paying the thirty, the other thirty-seven thousand dollars? Is that the city or is that ATC? It is not us. It's a grant. Okay. All right. All right. So um, we had a motion. Bert, did you move? There, no, I didn't. I have one more observation. So we, in essence, are a subcontractor of the grant that was given to the corporation. Is that accurate? That is my understanding of it. it DT, uh, DPW handles this grant, but that's my understanding. Thank you. Okay. All right. So can we have a motion then to approve the resolution? I would make a motion to approve this resolution. Okay, okay perfect. Any further discussion? All right, um, hearing nothing further, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, onward past stump grinding. Um, 3.6 is a pending claim from the Hoyer Law Offices on behalf of the American family for damages to um, a vehicle caused by a collision involving a city of Sheboygan vehicle. Chuck, do you want to take that? Chair, sure, I... this is here for filing. Um, the, uh, the matter has been paid. It was actually, we actually settled it quite some time ago and then it just took a long time for all the paperwork to go through the insurance company. It was quite slow. Uh, so in fact, we had to reissue the check. It was so slow. <laughs> this is just a report that uh, that that matter has been settled. Okay. Chair, chair, if I may add one piece of uh, this actually was on a previous agenda. The reason it actually came through again is the RC three one three did not get included the last time. So this is to make sure that we clear out those uh, carryover documents. Sure. So with that in mind, we need a motion to file. Move to file. Move. Bert, I'll take that as a second. Sure. Um, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. We have come to the end of our agenda. Our next meeting is October 12th at 5 p.m. Um, do we have any scheduling conflicts with anyone that we're aware of? All right, then I would ask for a motion to adjourn. A move. And is there a second? Second. All right. A motion and second to adjourn. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Aye.